Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, you'll notice that the, the view here is a little bit different. I'm actually in the same spot as normal, but I'm shooting from my phone because I've got stuff going on uh, back here behind me, as you can see. Uh, the goal for this video isn't a Docker container or, or a self-hosting service or whatever the case is uh, necessarily, other than uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna clean up some of the stuff here. Not necessarily the physical mess that we see, but we're gonna talk about uh, moving some things around from one server to another. We're gonna decommission some hardware uh, and kind of talk about um, some of the stuff that's, that was being used. I'm actually shooting this uh, intro after the video was mostly done because um, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. So the goal for this video is to clean up some of the infrastructure. Uh, and later we'll talk about cleaning up the physical mess itself, but uh, we're going to decommission some some hardware. We're gonna move some containers and some VMs around uh, from, from there, some of the hardware that's there to some of the other hardware that's there uh, in hopes to make uh, administering things a little bit easier for my monkey brain, as well as maybe a little bit of power savings. And uh, we'll talk about the power savings that we're actually gonna get here later in the video. Um, but I guess, I guess with that said, let's jump in and take a look uh, at what's going on uh, for the rest of this video. So this is my Sysrax 27U enclosed rack that I've had for, I don't know, the last year and a half or two years or whatever. Um, and you always see it in my videos behind me and I love it. Um, and it looks really nice uh, because of the lighting and that's been done very, very deliberately. Um, so let me, I'm gonna take off the front, I'm gonna take off that side over there and we're gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive to see kind of what I'm up against. And then we're gonna talk about my plan to fix it. Okay, so we've got the front off, we've got the side off, we're gonna talk about some of this. So uh, as as a YouTuber, I'm always testing out new hardware and here we can see, like that's that, that, that Synology right there is at a crazy angle. And if we come down, we can see that that shelf, that shelf's not holding up so well. Um, and of course you can kind of see some wiring back there behind and we come down, there's my HL15, but down here we've got even more stuff, you know, so I've got, let's let's actually do accounts. We've got two NASAs on that shelf and we've also got two mini PCs down here. See, there's two. Um, and then kind of an empty shelf for, for storage. Uh, then my HL15, then another NAS and another mini PC and then a patch panel. And then of course, up on top, I've got another Synology NAS up there that's just, honestly right now it is just running my Synology cameras on the outside, but but there's a lot going on in here. And of course at the bottom, um, you know, I've got my, uh, I, need to, I need to clean the floor as somebody brought to my attention in a previous video, but I've got my UPS down there. Um, and, and there's just a lot of power draw going on here, you know, with, what did we decide, one, two, three, we've got four, four NASAs in here, two mini, three mini PCs, and this HL15. Um, so I wanna consolidate some of this for the sake of power. Um, I, my, my ideal goal is to um, knock it down to that, the, the 1621XS Plus and the 923 that's up there. I want to decommission both of the NASAs down here um, and one of the mini PCs there and that mini PC as well, um, and kind of consolidate all of that into the HL15. Uh, and that's going to reduce my power consumption, but it's gonna do something else for me as well. And actually, I wanna, I wanna talk very briefly about kind of what's going on here. So th this NAS, this kind of runs my home infrastructure um, for, for all kinds of different things. Um, this Ace Magic Mini PC, um, the middle finger isn't on purpose, but it's a bit symbolic, I suppose. Uh, that is actually running a Plex server on it. It's got Windows 11, and I'm just running Plex server on that. I don't need it anymore. Um, and if we come down to here, uh, the, the um, where did it go? There it is. Uh, that that uh, two bay NAS right there is also running Plex on it. Um, this mini PC right here, I will probably leave, to be completely honest. Um, or I'll swap it out, I don't know. That's running my my Proxmox test server. That's where I do all my testing stuff with Proxmox. And then under it, this other little mini PC is actually uh, running production stuff. Like some of the stuff you guys access uh, for some of my online stuff is on that little mini PC right there. Um, and I wanna consolidate all of that into the HL15 
Um, I don't need three Plex servers because I've got Plex running on this as well. So I've got three Plex instances running, which is dumb. Uh, so I want to I want to decommission that Plex server, and I want to decommission uh, that Plex server, and I want to move everything that's on that little mini PC uh, up to the HL15, and then uh, that other NAS back there is actually a backup of my DS1621 XS Plus. Uh, so I want to consolidate a bunch of this stuff, and I just wanted to explain kind of what's going on here in the rack uh, with, with each of these different devices and kind of what and why I want to do what I want to do. Okay, so this is my trip light uh, UPS that's in the bottom of my rack, and I know it's dirty. I need to clean it. I need to clean lots of things. But I wanted to get an idea of what this looks like before I do the migration and shut down uh, several pieces of hardware, and it looks like we're hovering right around 500 watts here in the rack. Overall, not bad, but uh, let's see if uh, getting some things migrated and shut down actually helps us reduce the power consumption. Okay, so now that we have uh, kind of taken a look at all of the different pieces of hardware and everything that's in my rack, Presently, uh, let's kind of talk about the migration process of, or the process that I went through to make sure everything was ready for the migration uh, from one device to another, and then kind of the process I went through to make that happen. So the first thing that I wanted to do was make sure that everything was up to date. That's that's all of my all of my LXCs, all of my VMs, all of the software, the Docker containers, everything running on each of those. I wanted to make sure that it was up to date so that when everything moved, I knew that I was working with a good up-to-date copy of basically everything that I already had. So uh, a couple of days ago, I spent about an hour and a half making sure that everything was up to date. I went through container or by LXC and VM by LXC and VM and made sure all of that was up to date. And then once each of those was updated, I went through and updated basically all of the different containers that were on each of those different setups. Um, I, I have to say that I'm really, really bad at making sure that all of that uh, is kept up to date. I know there are services like Ansible that could make my life easier, um, but I'm just not there yet. Uh, hopefully someday I'll get into Ansible and automate a lot of that, but but not yet. So uh, I went through, I made sure everything was up to date. I made sure that everything was good to go. And then I was done. I just, an hour and a half of, of running code and running scripts and running updates and and, and running my brain into the ground. Uh, I decided I was done. I was just going to wait until the next day uh, for, for two reasons. One, to give myself a break, but two, because my Proxmox servers automatically back up every night. Uh, so then I could just restore the new backup uh, the next day. So that's what I did. Once I made sure I had a good backup of everything, uh, you know, I went through and made sure all of the backups were the most current date, which was this morning at the time of recording this anyway. Uh, once I made sure all of that was good, uh, I went through kind of one by one and restored each individual LXC and VM from my backup server. Um, and then once it was restored, um, I made sure that uh, the, the, the current setup on the old machine was running and then I shut it down and then I went over to the new machine and spun it up and made sure it was running. And that took me a little while um, and I'm, I'm glad that it's done. Um, each one probably took three or four minutes. It wasn't too bad. Um, but now, uh, now hopefully the, the backup process moving forward won't be so bad um, because both my Synology NAS and the uh, HL15 are both running on a 10 gig setup. So those data transfers should go really, really fast moving forward. And I'm really happy about that. And it really, it wasn't nearly as painless as I thought it was going to be. And that said, I didn't think it was going to be all that painless anyway, because I've been I've been kind of a Proxmox fanboy for the last couple of years, and using a Proxmox backup server between uh, the Synology and the HL15 uh, really has made things super super easy. Um, it just it's it's a quick backup on one machine and then restore on the other, and it's just it's really just that simple. I've made content about that whole process in other videos in the past. Um, but then once once all of that was done, uh, it was time to to shut some things down. So so let's let uh, past David talk about that for a minute. OK, so uh, now that the migration has been done, everybody's been moved over to the Plex VM that's on the HL15. Uh, I can shut down that Plex server and I can shut down that Plex server. 
and uh, let's see what else. Uh, everything has been migrated off of this mini PC down here my finger is touching, so it can get shut off. I'm gonna leave this one as it is. What I mean is I'm gonna leave it uh, in production or whatever because it's my test server for Proxmox. It's an N100, I think, processor. So super low power um, and, and it does what I need it to do for the sake of, of testing everything. So now comes the fun part where I get to just come up to here uh, to right there and just unplug it. Yay, I don't care. That device had Windows 11 on it running a Plex server um, and it's it doesn't now. Um, this, this I'm just gonna set aside and then this one, I just, I moved everything off of it if I could keep that in place. And uh, so, and, and it's, it's ready to go. So now I can just reach back there, find the plug and unplug it. Yay, now that one is offline as well. Um, so now we've just got that NAS left, I think, to, to unplug and uh, then and the migration will be more or less complete or, or, or whatever, at least for the time being. So let's reach back here. Let's find our plug. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Doo -doo, there it goes. And we are, we are offline. So uh, we took that offline. We took that offline. Uh, this NAS back here uh, hasn't been on in a really long time. I'll deal with that later. Uh, we left this online, took this offline. I think, I think that was everything I wanted to do with regards to getting the migration to the HL15 done. Um, that thing has been a beast. I've absolutely loved having it. Um, I love, I love everything that it does. The only thing I think I need to do at this point is um, the Plex VM that's on it, I need to delay the startup on it by just a couple of minutes. Here in Colorado, we've been having a lot of issues with power outages and that sort of thing, with the crazy weather and that kind of thing. And while taking a lot of this, you know, this other stuff offline, like we did, saved us, I don't know, 40 or 50 watts. Um, th this still doesn't, this still only lasts a few minutes with this setup the way it is with, with the HL15 and that NAS, and then, you know, the NAS that's back there running the cameras. There's actually a video coming on, on that NAS back there here again real soon. Anyway, um, so when the power comes back on, uh, both the HL15 and the DX, or the DS1621XS Plus automatically come back online, and all of my Plex media is stored on that device. So it boots up faster. No, I lied. The the HL15 boots up faster than the uh, than the 1621XS Plus does. So what happens is my Plex uh, VM can't mount the drives that are stored on that Synology device. So I need to I need to delay the startup of the VM on the HL15 to give the Synology device enough time to boot up so that uh, when the Plex uh, VM comes back online, uh, it can actually appropriately mount the uh, the VM or the, the remote folders that I've got mounted from, from that device. So ultimately I didn't necessarily get the power savings I was looking for. I mean, 50 watts is 50 watts, but it's only 50 watts. So I didn't really get the power savings that I was looking for uh, from this consolidation. But again, uh, I can take some devices offline. I can repurpose them. I can rehome them. Uh, whatever I happen to do with each individual device, I will figure out later. Um, but it should also help me again with just easier management, doing everything from one dashboard. I know I know, I could, I could put them both in one dashboard and whatnot. And, I don't like doing that. I just, I had a, I had a high, high availability server set up in the past with three nodes and it was great. Um, it's just not what I want to do now. So, uh, so now I've got everything, uh, everything basically running on that HL15. It's such a beast. It's currently using like 171 or 172 gigs of RAM just sitting there hanging out, but that's because of the ZFS file systems I'm using across everything. Um, and everything is snappy fast. I'm super happy with it. So that's it. That's all we're going to talk about in this particular video. Um, the reason for that is that um, there's a lot of wiring in here that I need to take out. A lot of it, I've taken old hardware out and just left the wiring in there. It is a garbage mess, dumpster fire, spaghetti platter, whatever. It's going to take me probably an entire day to decipher and pull apart and rewire. Um, and, and, and maybe I'm trying to milk content. I'm not deliberately trying to milk content out of this. 
Um, I just, I don't want this video to be exceptionally long. Um, so I don't mind doing these vlog style videos every once in a while. If you don't mind watching them and liking and subscribing and that sort of thing. So that is, that has been my adventure, uh, for the last couple of days. Um, my next adventure is going to be, um, uh, like I said, kind of, kind of dealing with this, uh, that, that video probably won't be up for another week or so. But then earlier in this video, I did mention that, um, I've got some upgrade parts for the DS923 that you can't really see. It's behind the TV there. Uh, we're going to upgrade that as well. That'll be another video. And I've still got so, so many Docker videos to do. So, uh, do me a favor, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and with that said, I'm going to wrap this up. I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And I will definitely talk to you in the next video.